Check one, two. This is a test from Louisville for ASAP. Getting set to start the press conferences here in just a little bit. I think uh, Purdue is up first. And we'll be hearing the, uh, the coaches and the players talk about the game coming up and how they plan to do their best. This is a test, testing for audio. Checking one, two, three. Let me uh, check the levels for you. I can bump that up. Checking one, two, three. Testing, test, test, test. Testing, one, two, three. Check, check one, two. Check, test. Testing, one, two, three. Is that better? So you got check, one, two. Yeah, yeah, knock it down. I think 15. No, that's as low as it goes. But otherwise, it's really loud. I mean, check, check, test. Yeah. Check one, two. Well, once I get set, it's pretty good. Testing, test, test. Is this working better for you guys over there? Come over here. Hello. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. Yeah, the, uh, the levels need to bounce up around here because of the way the system's set. So between zero and two. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the KFC Yum Center. 
and the University of Louisville. Just wanted to give you a five-minute heads up as we will begin the press conference with the Purdue Boilermakers and head coach Matt Painter. Five-minute warning. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Coach Painter is on his way down to the interview room. And when he gets here, just so you guys know, the locker room will be open from 1055 to 1125. We'll have Coach for about 15 minutes and then Purdue student athletes also for 15 minutes. Some reminders here in the interview room, please. Make sure you check cell phones and your mobile devices. Set them to silent, please. There is no flash photography or video recording here in the interview room. And when you do have questions, please raise your hand. We'll get microphones to you. Identify yourself and the outlet you represent. And we'll get the interview underway. Coach is now at the dais, and we will start with an opening statement from him and then go to questions. Coach, welcome to Louisville. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to be here. Um, our guys are really excited, um, you know, about advancing to the Sweet 16, and we know we have a great opportunity here in Louisville, um, getting ready to play a, a very tough Tennessee team, and um, we know we got our hands full. Uh, very well coached, very tough, very disciplined, um, play with a lot of passion. And uh, I know our, our guys are really looking forward to it and, uh, you know, getting out there tomorrow night and competing. Thanks, Coach. Now let's head to the floor for some questions. Just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you here in the left side, my left side in the center aisle. Gary Graves, Associated Press. Uh, with, with Tennessee's physicality, what's, what's the main thing that stands out when you see that on film? What's the hardest part right. about slowing that down? Well, I think their physicality definitely comes out uh, when you get behind plays. So if you're going to get um, in transition a lot, if you're going to get um, behind plays because you're, you're not containing the dribble, if you're going to get in rotations because you're double in the ball screen or double in the post, and now you have to over help, um, it's very important against them to give yourself a good chance is to stay out of those rotations and uh, not playing catch up. It seems like when you're playing catch up against them, they either make the shot or they get the miss and score. I know it's not always that way, but as a coach on the other, you know, on the other bench, it, it, it seems that way. I think that's going to be an important, 
no matter who plays Tennessee. I think that's a very important place. When you get behind plays, they normally make you play, uh, pay, and um, and they get to the free throw line that way too. You know, you you know they're, they're very very physical in that three four spot. But then you know, like a guy like Alexander, if you give too much attention to those guys, you know he's going to get putbacks um, like he did against us in the Bahamas. Question here on my left side, third row. John Adams, Knoxville News Sentinel. Matt, could you talk a little bit about Matt Harms' improvement from last season right. to the end of this season, and specifically, how, what has he gotten better in? Well, obviously, I think you, when you have guys that are talented and, and long like he is, you know, getting an opportunity and playing more, um, you know, you're going to have some improvements. Last year, he was our backup. He played 17 minutes a game. You know, this year he obviously plays more, even though he's. He started most of the year and came off the bench. Other times he still had starter type minutes, but just in every facet of the game, you know, he really plays off of our guards and has a kind of an uncanny ability to be around the basketball, whether that's, you know, playing in the post, catching and shooting on the perimeter, getting putbacks, just being around the basketball. So defensively, he uh, get, takes different matchups on for us. He does a good job of not only blocking shots, but changing shots. And then he's made an improvement, you know, rebounding the basketball. I think it's always tough for those tall, narrow, skinny guys to get that good base and especially go against physical players um, and be able to handle that um, and, and still affect the game. Matt's been able to do that and make improvements there and affect the game on both ends. Stay on the left side here, second row. Coach, Greg Mengelt, CNHI, Indiana. Um, can you, I know you're just concentrating on Tennessee right now, but can you talk about how tough this region is in general? Well, you know, obviously, um, you know, as a coach, you just, you know, you get locked in on that team in front of you. And, you know, the work that, get, that happens um, for the other teams in the regional that you're not playing right now, that you have a chance to play is kind of dealt you know, by your GAs and your assistants and, you know, but the, the focus is on um, Tennessee. But, you know, obviously, you know, the resume that Tennessee has, and you know, speaks for itself. Um, you know, I always talk about being in the NCAA tournament, you know, everybody earned their way here. But, you know, the people that have one and two seeds like Virginia and Tennessee, you know, they, they've just had phenomenal years to be able to, you know, to put themselves in that position. Then a team like Oregon, you know, is what it's all about. You know, this was a Final Four team a couple years ago. Um, they've changed their roster a lot. And uh, we're struggling, you know, midway through the season and then have really turned it around, won their tournament. And then obviously, um, you know, won two games to put themselves in this position. So that's that, you know, that hot team that um, is playing very well that might have a, a different number next to their name, but they're pretty equivalent to anybody they play or better than everybody they play. Um, because of the way they've been playing here the past month. And uh, that's what it's all about is how you play, you know, on Saturday and, you know, excuse me, how you play on Thursday and then how you play on Saturday. So, um, you know, this is uh, like every other region. This is, you know, obviously a lot of teams that have had really good years and they've earned the right to be here. Back left side still, center aisle. What's the main thing about your team here lately that and, and maybe even these, these past two tournament games that has emerged that maybe something you just didn't see maybe a surprise right I don't think um, anything is a surprise of how we've played um, you know as a coach you'd like to be more consistent you know we had a couple losses in the last two weeks of the season one in the conference tournament and one in our last uh, second to last road game uh, versus the same team in, um, in Minnesota so um, you know, you just like to be more consistent. Um, you know, we've gotten into the conference tournament before and won a game or won two games or, and then got to the NCAA tournament and played well. Then we've done that and got to the NCAA tournament and not played well. And so if you can, for, if you're fortunate enough to stay in it long enough, you kind of run the gamut about, you know, some of the things that you do at the end of the year and how it affects your tournament play in conference and also the NCAA tournament. But um, we really got into a good zone against Villanova and shot the ball extremely well. Uh, but we also out-rebounded them by 18. And um, I thought our effort was really good. And um, we didn't play as well offensively in our first round game against Old Dominion, but I think that had a lot to do with Old Dominion. I thought they were pretty good defensively, but once again, we played pretty well on the defensive end and held them under 50 points. So. Um, 
you always worry as a coach, um, you know, can you beat a really good team if you don't shoot the ball well? I think anybody that's still in the tournament, if they're hot and they shoot the ball well, they feel good about their chances. But that's not the way the game's played, you know, and the ball doesn't always go in. So I think that's what each coach is trying to put themselves in a position to do, like give yourself a chance, you know. But if the ball doesn't go in for us and it's not our night, you know, can we still grind it out and get victories? And that's how you normally win a conference championship because it's conference championship so long. You know, for us, it's 20 games. You know, it's a real kind of test that we, you know, we have some intestinal fortitude there and we have some toughness about us. But when you look at teams like Virginia and Tennessee, you know, they have those same qualities too. You know, you just don't do what Oregon did at the end of the year um, unless you have some mental toughness. They really showed some mental toughness and some resolve. So that's what you want. You know, you want to be able to shoot the ball well and play well on the defensive end. But if that doesn't work out, you got to be able to grind it out. And I think we've done a pretty good job with that. Okay, we're going to go one question here on the left in the back and then over here on the right. Coach, uh, Jim Womble, ESP in Louisville. Uh, after the University of Louisville offered Jeff Brom, uh, did you have any conversations with him? And if so, what were they like? I did not have conversations um, with him. I texted him and thanked him for staying. I don't know my exact text, but you know we were excited that he stayed at Purdue. Um, he's been unbelievable. He's been fabulous. Um, obviously, he's a really good coach and, and, and brought some, some fire to our athletic department, but um, he's a good guy, too. He's a big basketball fan, so he, you know, he, he comes around a lot and watches a lot of games, him and his son. Um, so I think that's, that's pretty cool, but um, it, it's exciting. You know, it's, I think the one thing that the sport of football will do you know, for your school um, is it ties all your sports together because that's an event that you can always bring recruits to. And so, you know, to play that exciting brand of football and move the ball around, and obviously Rondell Moore helps with a little bit of that too. Um, you got to have the guys to throw it to. Um, but it was, you know, it's very similar to the buzz um, that we had at Purdue when Joe Tiller had it going with Drew Brees. And, and so it's uh, pretty exciting. But we, we were obviously as an institution and as just, you know, someone who works at Purdue, you know, we, we were thrilled that he stayed. Here on the right and then to Pat. Dane O'Neill, The Athletic. Matt, obviously Grant and Admiral get a lot of attention for Tennessee, but with someone like Kyle Alexander down low, I mean, right. can he be a, a factor that people kind of yeah. overlook sometimes? Well, no question. You give so much attention. Um, you know, Schofield's a, a really good all-around scorer. Um, you know, for a guy that can move that way with that kind of body, it's a tough matchup for a lot of people. And then Grant kind of has the same, you know, qualities in terms of having that kind of power forward body but small forward game. You know, because he can move, he can shoot, he can rebound, he can play in the mid post, he can score around the basket, he can drive the ball. Um, just two really good, physical, versatile players. Now it leaves somebody open normally, you know, and that's where Kyle Alexander can be an impact. And he played well when they beat us in the Bahamas. You know, he, if you go back and look at his numbers, he played well in that game and really did some good things. So you've got to be able to keep them off the glass. And, um, you know, Jordan Bone's a guy that kind of somehow gets lost in the shuffle. But he's really good. Like he, if he, if Jordan Bones living in the paint, scoring in transition, getting everybody involved, it's normally a long night for the opponent. You know, you have to be able to understand all of those guys are capable of having career nights and ending your season. You stay on the left, right side. Uh, Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. You know the Purdue fan base as well as anybody, from player, assistant, head coach. Can you describe the fan base, the passion for basketball yeah. there, and maybe what a Final Four would mean to those people? Right. Well, I, they, the fan base at Purdue, um, I'm not saying it's totally this way, but it's a very educated fan base. Um, you know, you, you have a lot of people, if you're a Purdue fan, you're normally a Purdue grad. And that's not always the case, especially with a state school. You know, so you get some people that it's different. You know, and you have different sections of your fan base. We really have just a, a great overall fan base that understands the game. And um, it would be huge for them. You know, they've obviously, um, you know, been very consistent through the years and supported our basketball program. And we've been very good through the years, um, but we obviously haven't been to a Final Four. And so I think that would be great, not just for our fans, but also our former players. We, we have a lot of guys that have sacrificed through the years and had really, really good seasons, but it just, you haven't been able to put that cherry on the top um, and get to a Final Four. So I think that'd be great for a lot of people um, that have Purdue blood in them. More questions for Coach? Okay. Stay on the right side, center aisle. Uh, 
Dylan Sin from the Journal Gazette. Uh, Coach, uh, Tennessee had a 25 point lead against Iowa and Iowa came back, tied it, took it to overtime. Are there any lessons you can take from that uh, stretch when Iowa was coming back and really dominating that yeah. game? I think it's a, a couple of things. You know, obviously, um, you know, you, you really look, when you scout teams, you know, you look at their, their best. Like you always expect a team to play you and prepare for them at their highest level. Like you don't see somebody play and they struggle and you think that's who we're going to see. We're going to see that team. You like to see that team. Um, but that's not the way you prepare as a coach. You know, you really try to dive into them playing on all cylinders. And that's what, when, when Tennessee is going to have runs in a game, they have, they have huge runs in games. You know, you have to be able to limit those runs. And, and that's hard to do. So instead of like reflecting back on a game and saying Tennessee had a 22 to four run in this game, you know, if you can minimize that to where it's like a 11 to four run or a 13 to four run, and that's their, their their biggest one for the game, you've really helped yourself. Now you don't look at it when it's happening like that during the course of a game. That's that's always in reflection. Um, but um, you know, I was a good team. You know, Iowa, when Iowa gets it going and they're, they're clicking on all cylinders, they can score the basketball. Um, but so can Tennessee, so you kind of saw a tale of two halves. Um, but it was the beginning of that second half where, you know, Tennessee could have made a couple plays. They had a couple open shots that didn't go. They had a couple plays, a um, couple casual turnovers. Um, and that allowed Iowa to get their head up. And when you allow a good team to get their head up, they're, they're going to make that run. But Tennessee really showed – their mental toughness once that game got tied at 67. Um, I think Lamonte Turner was the one that hit that three to get it, you know, to get that lead back. And that, that was huge. And, he, and he's a timely player. And that's what's good, you know, when you, when you have great teams like that, like Lamonte Turner's this interviews went 20 minutes or 15 minutes, and his name just came up. You know, he's a really good player. He can defend. He can make, you know, big shots. Um, and, and so you throw guys like him and Bowden. They don't, sometimes they don't even get mentioned, and they're, and they're key players. They've had games this year where they've been their best player. Um, so, um, but it really just showed their, their, their resolve and their mental toughness to be able to, to make that shot, make that play, get it going. But still, Iowa made a couple more plays and got it in overtime. And then obviously Tennessee played better than Iowa, you know, in that overtime. Time for one more. Let's get it in real quick here. Uh, Joe Rexford of the Tennessee and Matt, when Carson has struggled this year, how much has it had to do with his defender or the defense? Yeah. Um, you're obviously asking me a general question about a lot of individual games. Um, it just depends. Sometimes it's been a better defender. Um, sometimes it's been um, him getting some pretty good looks and some pretty good shots. Um, there's no question that he went through a, a tough stretch there for us in, in terms of shooting the basketball. I've always believed with him it's, it's not his ability to make a shot, it's his decision making. When he makes good decisions, if they want to put two people on the ball, you know, get the ball out of your hands. You know, it's, it's, it's as simple as that, whether that's ball screen defense or some different actions that we use to try to get him the basketball. Uh, but I think it's been a combination of things. Um, I think there's also a lot when you get in positions like a Grant Williams or a Carson Edwards, where you're the one of the best players in your league, if not the best player in your league one season, normally those guys don't stay in college basketball. So for Purdue and Tennessee to be able to reap, you know, the benefits of having, you know, quality experienced players um, is a little bit rare sometimes. And, you know, those guys get a lot of things thrown at them and defenses do different things to them. And um, when he misses shots to me, I just think we have a bunch of makes coming our way. I kind of look at it like a hitter in baseball. You know, you, you take a 300 hitter that's struggling, you know, the percentage they're, they're going to they're gonna weigh out. He's, he's got some hits coming his way. And, um, you know, obviously the, the Villanova game, we, you know, we had some makes there. And, um, but he didn't shoot well, um, you know, for about a month there. You know, he re really had a tough stretch. But um, he's tough and he's got a short memory, um, which is great for a guy that scores the ball a lot. Good deal. Coach, thanks for your time. Good right. luck. Thank you. Carson and Ryan will be up momentarily.
Good, how you doing? Good, good. All right, we have the Purdue student athletes, Carson Edwards, Ryan Klein in with us. Uh, now we'll go immediately to questions from the floor. We'll start here on the left side, my left, second row. Carson, the other night after the game, you said you didn't realize you were having a career night until, until the game was over. Um, now that you've had some time, can you reflect on, um, on what that was like as a player? Um, uh, I mean, it's just a cool experience. Just, just being able to uh, play, be able to be with some good guys. I mean, I, I honestly don't want to reflect on it now. I just want to focus on the next game coming up and doing the right things just to help my team win. So, but I mean, it was it was a good experience and had some shots fall for me. But most importantly, we were able to get the win. And not just me, a lot of guys on the team played well, and we did a lot of good things. So. Stay on my left side here, center aisle. Gary Graves, AP. Um, Carson, over these last 10 games or so, uh, you know, what, what's really emerged for this team in terms of you know, it's maybe physicality, um, resolve, any, any little intangible that, that you can see that's really helped the squad? Um, I'd, say, I'd say we, first off, we just have so much to work on. Never do I feel like we're at a spot where we want to be. We want to continue to work, and we still have a lot of things to focus on details-wise. But I feel like just in these last 10 games, just kind of working on being able to find ways to win, even if our offense is off, even if we haven't, aren't making shots, just being able to grind the game out, get stops, and just trusting on our defense, being consistent on defensive end, and letting the offense come to us, and just being able to find ways to win, even if our offense isn't, I guess, unless if we're not making shots. That's what we mainly try to, I guess, continue to do better. Here on the left side, third row. Yeah, Carson, is there a right here, Carson, is there a particular kind of defender who is more effective against you? Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I just, I just approach every game just pati being patiently aggressive and just trying to make the right decisions for my team. I don't, I don't. I wouldn't say I know a defender or what. I don't know. I just know that I just try to do the right things for my team and just help my team win and put ourselves in the best position. So that's just mainly what I focus on and just continue to approach every game the same way. Stay here on the left. For Ryan, the, the rigors of the, the Big Ten, um, how, how, does, how does it feel when you get to this point in the season? I mean, how does that prepare you for this point? I don't want to say that this is a relief because it's different, but but how does that prepare you for, for March like this? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, talking about the Big Ten, it's one of the best conferences in the country. And uh, being able to have that preparation is big for us. But, you, you know, you get in the tournament and you're kind of relieved to play someone else just because you've been playing the same teams for, for 20 games. You've been watching the same teams for 20 games. And, you know, you kind of get in this tournament and you're, like, relieved that you get to play someone a little bit different. But, yeah, it's obviously great preparation for us, you know, being in the Big Ten. Ryan, um, obviously uh, the first two games were pretty tough, but um, can you talk about how much tougher it's going to get with this region and how um, stacked it is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, everyone's obviously fighting for their lives um, in the tournament, but, you know, there's so much at stake in the, the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight. You know, everyone's playing for a Final Four spot, and uh, everyone's going to come out hungry and excited, and, you know, we got to do the same. We just got to come out and compete. And, and uh, mostly just have fun out there. More questions for the Purdue student athletes? OK, we'll go over on the left side, third row. Uh, John Burton, News Channel 5 in Nashville. It's for either student athlete. Just when you see the way Tennessee was able to kind of grind out the Iowa game and they kind of struggled in the first game against Colgate, what kind of team do you expect to see tomorrow night in terms of how they come out? Carson first, please. Um, I'd say I just expect a, a really talented, really athletic team with a lot of depth and play very physical. I mean, regardless, regardless of those last two games, you, it's a new game. And like he said, they're fighting for their lives. And playing is 
just competing, just competing at a high level. So that's what I expect him to come out and compete at a high level, and we have to too. But, I mean, I'm just excited. It's a game I love and be able to play a very talented team and just competing with my guys. Ryan? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously I agree with what Carson's saying. Uh, you know, at, at a decent stretch, you know, of the year, they were the number one team in the country, and that's the team that I'm expecting to, uh, to come out on on Thursday. Anything else for Carson or Ryan? Okay, guys, thanks for your time today and good luck. We will have the Tennessee student athletes at 1210. Checking one, two, check. Testing one, two, three, check. Testing, testing, test, test, testing. Testing one, two, three, check. Checking one, two, checking one, two, three. Test, 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 test. Test, check. Check, check, check. Checking one, two, three. This is a test. Testing one, two. Oh, there's a lot more volume now. Checking one, two. Test, test. Sounds good.
Yeah, well, that's not true. <laughs> Who am I? Why am I here? <laughs> it's fun. A lot of guys doing a lot more work than me. And it gets me away from Heber. <laughs> yeah. Jesse. Hey, Jesse. think so it's weird because there's like it goes the second of both games it says it's the players first so, I'm not well, so and this one was printed last week okay yeah okay good well both of you are good I mean if we have to we'll just move we'll we'll put Rick's like right here coach Barnes is right here and then all right well let's go ahead and yep okay yeah that's fine all right, thank you. I put actually. Let's put them because we're saving this seat, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. Yeah. No, no, the no. order is the same. Order is staying the same. Yeah. Just so that you would have to do that right now. Because I saw that and I wasn't necessarily sure. I was like saying. You can slide Kyle's over at the end a little bit and to the left. Ladies and gentlemen, in about two minutes, we'll have the Tennessee student athletes join us in the interview room. Two minute warning. Test, test. Check one, two. That's just really low. Check, test. Test one, two. Check, is this better? Is that better? I'm over here. Is that good? Just a, a little bit more? How's that? Is that better? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the volunteers are on their way up to the dais in the interview room. 
As a reminder, just check your cell phones and mobile devices, set them to silent, please. There is no flash photography or video recording in the interview room. And when you do have questions here in the uh, room, please identify yourself the first time in the outlet you're with, and we'll get a microphone to you on both sides, and we'll go from there. But we want to welcome the Tennessee volunteers to Louisville. Once they get settled up here, we'll go to the floor for questions. How you guys doing? Good, good, good. Welcome. All right, the balls are all settled in here. Let's uh, open it up to questions for the Tennessee student athletes, please. Right here in the front row, second row on the left, my left. John Adamson, Oxford New Sentinel. Cal, I know you've got a lot up against a lot of good post players. Uh, I don't know against anybody seven three before. Could you talk a little bit about Matt Harms and what problems he presents for a player? Um, you know, we you know we did play against him last year, and he was on the team. And you know, he he played a vital part in their team. But um, um, you know, just against any post player, you just got to come ready to play. You know, um, especially somebody who has a side size advantage on you. You know, you just got to come ready to play. You just got to be ready to compete. Right side, center aisle, second row. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Um, Grant. Can you th think back to that Purdue game last year? Do you feel like that sort of jump-started you guys to the, to the season you had, legitimized you? I mean, that was the first time you'd really gotten over the hump against a team of that, that stature. Definitely, we had a chance to um, show something that we wanted to show to ourselves. And last year, that was a final game for us. And we came in with the competitive mentality of, of going out there and winning. And getting that win was important for us and it's helped us during that season. But it's a whole new team. It's a whole new year. So uh, we have to come prepared for the team that we're playing on, on Thursday, Thursday night. Let's stay on my right here, front row. I'm Fred Calgill with the local CBS affiliate here in Louisville. This is for actually all you guys. The, the Tennessee program has not enjoyed uh, upper tier success, Final Four type success before. How much does that mean to you guys in terms of the equity that you're building for the future in this program? This is for everybody, starting with Grant, just going down, down the line, please. Yeah, Grant first, please. Um, well, we definitely, coming in, being recruited here, we wanted to leave our legacy and we wanted to uh, lay the foundation for future um, prospects to come here, and I feel like we've done a good job of that. There's more to more to do and more to prove, but um, so far we're doing our job, which we got to keep it up. Admiral, uh, I don't have a comment. Jordan, um, you know, just you know, Tennessee basketball history. Um, you know, it means a lot to be one of the teams that you know people look forward to watching. And, and like Grant mentioned, we're a team that you know. We feel like we, we're going to leave our legacy here when we leave, but we still have a lot more work to do. Um, you know, it doesn't stop here. We've got we to gotta keep pushing so we can, you know, be, be that team that we want to be and uh, have, you know, recruits who want to play against a team or play for a team like this. Lamonte? No, no comment. Kyle? Yeah, they, they pretty okay. much covered it. Next question. Left side, second row. Gary Graves, Associated Press. Uh, Grant, uh, you, uh, for this team, I mean, what, first of all, what does it mean to you to, to, to be here, to, to be on this stage in the Sweet 16, and, and how has Coach really prepared you all for this? Well, it's definitely an honor. We're uh, thankful to be here. Um, not many teams have the opportunity, and we've worked for it, and Coach just tells us that we have to come with the same mindset as we always have with uh, preparation and understanding that every little detail matters. Uh, we have to come in prepared to play the game because just like – any other time, we have one game ahead of us, and then we got to move on from there after that. Center aisle, right side, second row. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Lamonte, can you just talk about Carson Edwards, the challenge, what you've seen on film from him this week? Well, Carson is a great player. Um, their offense really revolves a lot around him. Um, they run a lot of different things to give him the ball in different areas. Um, he's a great player. We matched up with him last year, so I'm a, a little more familiar with his game. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to the matchup of being able to guard them and uh, just compete and um, just get, get another chance to just um, just prove ourselves right. And um, I'm looking forward to it. Back to the front row here on the right. Frank Calgill again with the CBS and Louisville. This is for Jordan. Jordan, how is this team different than last year? I mean, it, there seems to be a different dynamic, maybe a little more toughness, maybe a little versatility. It seems like you have more for lack of a better expression, weapons at your disposal than maybe you had before. Is that a fair estimation? Yeah, um, you know, during the offseason, a lot of guys worked at their game. Um, you know, we have a lot more options offensively to go to. Um, I feel like this team is more mature than last year. Um, we're much more mentally tough. And um, I think it's just, you know, brought us to this point that we're here today. Um, you know, just being that tough team, um, being the team that, you know, plays towards their strengths. but. If the strengths don't work, we're able to, you know, play off other people um, and, and, and just, you know, just going out there and competing. I think this team is much more competitive than last year. Um, I feel like some guys last year were kind of okay to, you know, walk off the court without a win, but but this team doesn't. Um, we want to win everything, um, and it shows in practice. So um, I think we're a much more better team in those different aspects. Question on the left side here, second row. Uh, <clears throat> for Admiral, the with the, the SEC tournament, what did you all kind of learn from that that last loss? And, and I guess what kind of resolve is that kind of giving you all, for your, you know, for this next level, for this next step? Um, rest is important. Uh, when you get it, when you're in tournaments, you got to get your rest. I think that's the biggest thing that we learned. Uh, just wasn't the same team to have energy. And when we don't have energy, we make mental mistakes and silly mistakes like we did so. Um, but at the end of the day, we had to play the game and we didn't play it the right way. So I would just say rest is very important. More questions for the Tennessee student athletes? Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Oh, there. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Barnes will be here in just a few minutes in the interview room. Just to give you a heads up, actually, he's here right now. Hey, Tim. Yeah. So, just to let you know, Coach Barnes is at the dais here in the interview room. We're going to go ahead and get started with his part of today's activities, and uh, we'll begin with some opening comments from Coach, and then we'll open it to the floor for questions. Coach, welcome to Louisville. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. It's obviously great to be here. And again, we uh, understand the opponent we're going up against tomorrow, and Purdue, we last faced them, and both teams are pretty familiar with each other with, over in the Bahamas a year ago and overtime game. And uh, uh, you have to be impressed with, again, this Purdue team that they play really, really hard, great defense, uh, bring speed to the game offensively. And I think a team that really understands their roles and uh, play really, really well together and coming out of a great league where they were co-champions and uh, extremely well-coached team. And so we know that we've got a, a big challenge in front of us. Thank you. Questions to the floor. Let's start here in the center aisle, John, and then we'll go right behind him. John Adams, Knoxville News Sentinel. Rick, uh, I know you played against them last year, but Matt Harms is a more prominent player now. Big guy who's very active. Could you talk about the special problems he presents for you, both ends? You're right. He is, John. He's, uh, he's improved, much improved from a year ago, and uh, he moves well. A guy that uh, very confident around the basket and, and uh, can sh shoot the ball. They will bring him away from the basket. They won't necessarily just lock him into the post. They'll bring him out, let him ball screen, roll into the post. And their double ball screen actions, they do different things out of that where he's a part of it. But uh, he's a guy that, uh, again, he, he can really affect the game on both ends of the court. Troy Provo here in the Maryville Daily Times. Uh, Rick, you're a guy who believes in if you play really good defense, your offense will eventually come to you. Do you feel like this postseason, Lamonte's kind of been proof of that? I do think that if you get lost in the game defensively and, and again, just do the things that you, pra you practice offensively and execute, those things will come your way. And, but Lamonte really has become the, the defensive player we've always thought he could be since he's been with us. And he's continuing to take that challenge on. And he knows that, uh, one, we need him to play that role. And uh, offensively, uh, as a group, if we – first of all, we've got to be locked in defensively, especially against a team like Purdue. They, they do so much and they're, they're so active and bring so much speed to, to their offense that uh, you've got to be on edge there. And then on the other end, you've got to take care of the ball because they do a great job themselves of turning it, uh, your mistakes in the baskets. And uh, I like to see uh, our team really all lock in defensively the way Lamonte does. And if he does that, that will obviously give us a much better chance. Okay, let's go to the right side, second row, and then we'll come up over here on the left end. Uh, Dane O'Neill, The Athletic. Rick, Kyle's development, I mean, he's like a, a baby, really, when it comes to basketball. Do you still find yourself having to kind of explain things to him in a more literal sense than you might have to with some guys his age and his in, at this level? Who, are you know what, Lamonte? Kyle, Kyle. Kyle, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, uh, you know, you go back to when we – recruited Kyle you know he was going to come to Texas and be a red shirt we were going to red shirt him and then we obviously at Tennessee we told him that the role changes and he's going to come in and play and I think he started every game if not he's close to it but uh you know Coach Lanier used to have this video of this little baby giraffe that was just being born standing up wobbling and falling all over the place and uh that was Kyle Alexander and and you feel like he I, I've said before I wish we could have redshirted him at Tennessee because I think his best basketball, well, I know his best basketball is ahead of him, and uh, he'll be one of those guys in a couple of years people are going to say, wow, this guy's really coming to his own because physically once he continues to get the weight that he needs on him, and, and Kyle's a worker. He's not afraid to put time in the gym, and he, uh, uh, but he's still young to the game. He really is. Let's go left side here, second row. Over here, Coach. Um, Gary Graves, Associated Sorry. Press. Uh, how have you prepared the team for, for this whole new experience of being in the Sweet 16? I mean, it's one thing to be in a tournament, but to be at this level. And how do you tell them you know, not to worry about the program's record uh, at, at this point? Well, to be, they, they know where they are. I mean, they know it. They, it's something that they've watched throughout their life, and they, they know it. And, and I think what you do, I don't think you make a 
make it any bigger deal than it is. I think that you keep them focused on what you do as a team and what you've done since uh, November, where we go about our, you know, we had a, a day off when we got back to Knoxville and we came back in and started prepping just like we would if we were getting ready for a game in December, even though they, they know where we are. They know there are 16 teams left in this tournament. And uh, we'll, we did what we did this morning, you know, breakfast film session here and do what we do tonight. And as much as we can, we try to keep them within their routine and, and um, try to keep them focused at, at hand. But along the way, they've, they've worked hard to be here. You want them to enjoy it. But, but uh, we've always said it gets more fun each time you win. And, and you hope that we can stay focused enough to, to do our job and, and there's more left. Going on my right side here. Second row. Uh, Rob Lewis, ballquest.com. Coach, can you just talk about Carson Edwards, what makes him so tough to guard, had one of the biggest games in the tournament this weekend? Well, he's so tough to guard because, you know, he's got the green light and uh, he can shoot it deep. Uh, I, th I think that Purdue's a team that really understands their roles and his teammates understand that what he can do for them. And, uh, and the fact that he can stretch your defense, he can stretch your defense by – uh, I mean, he comes across half court, whether it's him with the ball where he can, if, you're not, if you don't find him early, he's going to shoot that three in transition. If he's one pass away, they, they're a really good team making that first pass in transition. And they, they're going to shoot it. And uh, I like the fact he's very active defensively. But, uh, again, it's a, it's a team game, and it, and it won't be just one guy trying to guard him. I think as a team, there's a lot that goes into guarding guys like that uh, where you don't want to lose them. And, you can lose them by just what you do on the offensive end. If you turn the ball over and let them get out in the open court, they're, they're great at that and finding who they want to get the ball to. But uh, he is a very, very explosive guy, and you know he's going to get his shots. And uh, so you've got to be on edge. Really, from the time that uh, he comes across half court, you better know where he is. And they do a great job in our offense running them off double, triple screens and their dribble handoff actions. Uh, and he does a great job himself moving without the ball. Staying on our left side here, back row. Yeah. Hey, Rick, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch in Virginia. I wanted to ask you, if you don't mind, about your director of ops, uh, Mary Carter, how you uh, found her and, and what you thought would make her fit in that role. Well, when I left Texas, Jerry Johnson, who had been with me for a long time, you know, chose to stay back there. And, and the one thing I learned from being around Jerry was I wanted somebody that didn't want to coach basketball. I wanted somebody that uh, wanted to be an administrator and – we, uh, when I got there, uh, both Dave Hart and John uh, uh, Gilbert had told me about Kyle Condon, who had been on the staff. And uh, when we went out to our orange caravans, everywhere we went, I noticed Mary Carter was a person that was just, she impressed me with the way she was doing everything. And, and uh, then I asked one day uh, to John Gilbert, I said, what kind of administrator do you think she would make? And then Tom Satkoviak, who's our SID over here, I talked to Tom, and he said she would be great. And uh, so uh, I wasn't sure, you know. And then we were at the last Orange Caravan, and uh, we were at the football stadium in uh, Nashville and where the Titans play, and it was one of the hardest downpours you could imagine. We had like four SUVs lined up. Uh, and by the time you, you go 10 feet, you're getting soaking wet. And uh, Mary Carter was in charge of making sure everybody was in the van. And so she went from one car to the next car to the next car to the next car. And when she got in the van with me, I'm not kidding you, her shoes were squeaking. She was soaking wet. And I decided right then I was going to hire her. And, uh, and she has been a big addition to our program. And what she does for our program, uh, she takes all the stress off everybody. And uh, I, I can't imagine there's a there's a director of operations better in the country than she is, and uh, she's tough. You know, she's one of those guys that can hang with the guys, and and uh, she's got a great husband, and uh, but really, she's a huge part of our program. Stay over the left here, Coach. Greg Mengelt, CNHI Indiana. Um, can you just talk about how tough this region is and how hard it's going to be to get to a Final Four? Well, they're all tough. I mean, it's, it's tough. Uh, this region, every region, it's tough to get to a Final Four any year. But uh, it is tough. And I think, you know, if you're playing this time of year, it's because you've had a great year or you're playing well right now. And I think there's some really good defensive teams in this region right here. Got teams that really try to hang their hat on their defense. And good offense is hard to come by. And 
But uh, it, it'll take a great effort from any of the four teams here to, to make it to the Final Four. And one's going to do it, and it's going to – I promise you, they're going to be as prepared for the Final Four as anybody. More questions for Coach? Right here, our right side, center aisle. Hi, Coach. Fred Calgill with the CBS affiliate here in Louisville. Your team has shown a will to win this season, which is pretty rare. There have been times when it looked like you were going to lose and you didn't. What, what is it about this team, either the sum of its parts or the individuals that have helped you do that? Well, in some situations, I wish we would do a better job protecting leads, you know, and, and that. But uh, I do think that this group has been through a lot together. You know, uh, I've said before, you go back four years ago, you know, Admiral Schofield, Kyle Alexander, and our Lucas Campbell and Brad Woodson, they lost 19 games. And a year later, we lose 15, 16 games. And, and we felt a year ago going to the Bahamas that that tournament was really important for us. And I think it was a, a big kickstart for us down there. Uh, but uh, just the fact that we've always tried to play a really hard schedule and um, try to put them in as many difficult, stressful situations as they can. And there is a, a good resolve about them, but uh, they, I think it gets down to they really have a belief in each other, understanding what each role each player can do and trying to play through those guys, playing their roles. Danielle Santoro, CBS Sports. Coach, you've been to a Final Four, you've been to two Elite Eights. What does it feel to be back at the Sweet 16 after? Well, you know what, obviously it's exciting because it's what you do, and I, but I'm really excited for this team because I, I go back and, and uh, you know, I, I, I just think about how far they've grown as, as young men and how, how much they've grown as a team. You know, it's well documented. We didn't have the five, four, five-star guys, but these guys are better basketball players than their ratings, uh, obviously. And But I know how hard they've worked. And and from the time that we start, our if you ask me what our number one goal is every year, is to be a part of the NCAA tournament. And when you're a part of this tournament, it gives you a chance to do just this. And you, and you want to be in it where you can play as long as you can. And so I'm really excited. I mean, I'm older now and I've been through it, but for these guys, it's going to be a, uh, something they're going to remember for the rest of their lives, being a part of it and getting here. And also, when I think of it, I think of, like all the teams here, you don't get here unless you you have a work ethic and you have one, you've got good players and guys that buy into each other. And uh, But I'm really probably more excited for our, our program. And I'm certainly excited for our fans, I mean, because they've been great with us all year. But... Uh, these guys have worked hard to get here, and I hope that they can continue to, to, to want more. Anything else for Coach? Okay, yeah, we've got time. Center out there. Fred Calgill again with the CBS in Louisville. I asked the guys earlier about the legacy they're leaving behind. I mean, do, do you think they get the building blocks? The program's never been to the Final Four. It's been relatively sparse in Sweet 16s and Elite 8s and all of that. There's, there's the building blocks here of something that, you know, has almost never happened before. Well, I think they do because people talk about it with them. I, I, I do think that. But, uh, you know, we again, we uh, you talk about goals. We come in our building. We don't have a lot of motivational sayings or any of those type things. And, and what we talk about is just being the best team that we can be and let's see where it takes us. And that means you've got to ask your players to be the best players they can be to, and then buy into the role that they have to play. And uh, But uh, this group – you know, it's been, again, it's been fun watching them grow together. And uh, there's not always the great times, but uh, the last two years they've, they've done a lot, a lot more than what probably was expected from the outside, from the inside. I wouldn't say that because we've always had the high expectations, and I think they've created that. And, uh, and so I, I do know that there's a lot to be they, – they, they will be proud of. And in the moment right now you don't think a lot about that. You just focus on what you have to do and hope that you can continue. Anything else? Okay. Coach, thanks for right. your time. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. We'll have Oregon Coach Altman at 1250.
Ladies and gentlemen, in two minutes, we'll have Coach Altman, and that will be followed by the Oregon student athletes. Two minute warning. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Altman is on his way up to the dais here in the interview room. Hey, Coach, how are you? Well, thank you. Just a reminder, check cell phones, make sure they're on silent. And when you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you, and we'll get things started as soon as Coach is settled. If he doesn't mind opening remarks, and then we'll go to questions from the floor. Coach, welcome to Louisville. Thank you. Uh, we've got a big challenge ahead of us. Um, we don't get an opportunity to watch Virginia much during the season because of the time difference, but uh, last couple days watching them on film, uh, very impressive team, well coached, uh, know what they want to do on every possession. So be a big challenge for our basketball team, but our guys uh, are excited about the opportunity, excited about the challenge, and uh, we're going to have to play awfully well to, to give ourselves an opportunity. Thanks, Coach. Let's open it up to the floor. Question here on the right side, center aisle. Yeah, Doug Dowdy from the Roanoke Times in Virginia. It seemed that you, uh, you had a series there with Virginia about 10 years ago. Uh, how did that get started? Uh, I took the job. Uh, at uh, Oregon, um, and you know we needed games, and uh, so uh, we called uh, Virginia, and uh, we went out there first. It was my first year, so it was nine years ago, uh, and then the second year they came back to our place. But uh, uh, we were needing a game, and Tony was needing a game, so uh, we just went home and home, and we started the series out there, and and then uh, got beat at home also. Okay. Second row here on my left side, Dana. Yeah. And then we'll go to the right side here. Second. Uh, Dana, obviously there's a lot of words and rumors being passed around about your program right now with the Michael Avenatti stuff this week. Do you have anything that you can say to what's been said or implicated or rumored? No, I, I don't have any information on that. Uh, Bull's been with us this year, but uh, I don't have any information. Uh, on that. Okay, go to the right side here, center aisle. Ron Couch, the Daily Progress in Charlottesville. Coach, you guys lost Bowl Bowl, I think ninth game of this season, was still since then. You guys have been one of the most efficient defenses in the country. How did you guys adjust your defense after losing your 7-2 center, and what's been the key to your defense being so successful? Well, we've, we've kind of been up and down all year uh, with the injuries. Uh, Lou didn't play the first nine games, uh, nine or ten games, because he was recovering from knee surgery. And then Bowl um, hurt his foot. And, and then Kenny broke his jaw and was out for a month. And uh, when we got him back, uh, Paul uh, White uh, twisted his ankle, and he was ineffective for a while. So we, and I know it's an excuse, everybody has injuries, but we, we've kind of been up and down with injuries. Uh, and Bolt would have been a, a real productive member of our defense. You know, his shot blocking ability uh, uh, would have really helped us. He and Kenny together would have, would have really given us a one-two punch there to protect the rim. Uh, but, you know, the guys have stepped up. Our communication's been a lot better here lately. Uh, guys have taken a lot more pride in, in doing a good job with the scouting report and, and with their defense. So, um, you know, hopefully we can keep that up. This is the most efficient offense, though, we faced. You know, their efficiency numbers are, are off the chart. They don't turn the ball over. Uh, they get the shot they want on most possessions. So uh, it would be a big challenge for us defensively because, you know, just 
how well uh, they handle the ball and how well they, they know what they want on each possession and, and look for it. Let's go to the left end here, second row, and then we'll go in the right back. Um, Gary Graves, Associated Press. Along that line, we talked about offensive efficiency. This team, these last 10 games, seems to have really flipped the switch in, in terms of not just scoring points, but, but really locking down. Um, you know, how, with everything that's happened, how, did, how do you uh, attribute that, that turnaround so quick? Well, I, th I think two things. Communication, first of all, the guys are really doing a better job there. And then, you know, we are healthy now. We, we've got everybody and, and the guys uh, have really gelled together. Uh, you know, the nine guys that we're playing now, uh, you know, really feel comfortable, I think, with their roles. And, uh, you know, they're, they're really playing unselfishly now uh, on the offensive end and on the defensive end. So. You know, we, we are playing our best basketball. Uh, whether it will be good enough tomorrow night, I'm not sure. But uh, we are playing a lot better than we were, you know, a month, six weeks ago. Let's go to my right in the back row. Uh, Dana, Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Are you concerned at all with Michael Avenatti's allegations regarding Bull Bull? And what's the nature of Bull's relationship with Mel McDonald? You know, I don't have any information on uh, – you know the things that are going on and uh you know as far as mel's relationship with bowl you know i know they know each other uh, how what the relationship is i'm not quite sure but they definitely know each other next question for coach left side center aisle here yeah kip coon south boston news and record and uh, press box view uh dana Having seen Tony's pack line defense, even though it was years ago, uh, does that help in your preparation for the way they play it now? You know, I, I think, you know, it's not the same defense that, that he's run. I think they get out a little bit more than, than what they previously have. Um, you know, uh, they're really, you know, pressuring the ball a little bit more with Clark. Um, you know, he's picking up a little bit more full court than that. So, you know, I think it's a little different. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we don't get to see them a lot uh, because of the time difference. But, uh, you know, what I've seen and what I remember, I think it's a little bit more extended than, than it has been in previous years. And, um, you know, they rebound the ball so well. That's, you know, the thing that you know, not many people talk about. They're a plus five on the boards. And, uh uh, that's uh, that's a big number, you know, considering their competition level, and that uh, to be a plus five is is a big stat. Left side here, second row, Dana, and then we'll go to Gary. Uh, Dana, just DeAndre Hunter specifically, what kind of challenges does he specifically play on this team because of, of his talents? Well, he's so versatile, Dana. He, I mean, he does so many things. Uh, he can go outside and shoot the three, he puts the ball on the floor, he posts up. Um, anytime you, you have a young man who player that can score in those three areas and, um, you know, just doesn't get in a hurry, his tempo, his pace, uh, you know, he, he makes the right decision, you know, nine times out of ten. So his ability to score from three different levels and, and his pace, uh, he's a tough matchup at 6-7, you know, and, and good athlete, uh, just a real difficult matchup. Staying over here on my left, Coach. Coach, uh, obviously you knew what you were getting with, I mean, uh, but what have you seen here with him lately that, that, that's really been a surprise to me? Where, where has he really been valuable to you? Well, Ehab's given us tremendous energy off the bench. Um, you know, we were really struggling against Cal Irvine, and, uh, you know, he came in and, and hit a big shot, but defensively really got us going again. Um, so his energy off the bench uh, defensively um, has, has been really good. He's been real active on the boards. Uh, but he's, he's really a, a good leader defensively, and, and he's been making some big shots for us. Uh, you know, he went four for four against Cal Irvine from three, and, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's done some things offensively in the conference tournament to really help us. But his biggest help has been on the defensive end and, and definitely on the boards. Next question here in the right side center aisle. 
Yes, uh, looks like you lost those three games in a row, second half of February, then you went on and won 10 in a row. Can you kind of, for those of us who don't see all the time, what, what happened there? Well, we were really bad in those three games. We had three road games uh, in a row, and uh, you know, it, was, it was definitely our uh, low point, or one of the low points of the year. We just we played really poorly uh, at Oregon State, uh, at USC, uh, and then the second half of UCLA, we, we broke down defensively terribly. So uh, three really poor performances, and uh, but we came back home, the guys, uh, got themselves right, really did a good job getting together and getting each other prepared. And, and we played really well against Arizona State and Arizona at home. 28-point uh, win over Arizona State, and I think 26 over Arizona, and, and, and really started playing uh, much more connected offensively and defensively and, and just started playing a lot better. But those three road games, uh, you know, we were, we were bad. We weren't a very good basketball team. And, and the guys really righted the ship there and, and really did a great job. Go my left side here in the back row. Coach, usually a, a 12 seat gets this far and they're sort of viewed as a, as a Cinderella. You all obviously don't have a, a Cinderella pedigree in Oregon, but being the, the lone, like low seed in this tournament, what's your perception of it? Do you, do you use that as a motivator or any sort of underdog role with this team? Well, I don't, I don't think at this point anybody needs any motivation. Uh, you know, the guys are excited about playing. And, uh, uh, you know, for the total of the season, we weren't a good basketball team. You know, I mean, if you look at our last eight or nine, ten games, you know, uh, we've been a totally different team. But uh, before that, we were really inconsistent, you know, uh, within games, from game to game. Uh, our consistency was uh, was not very good. Kind of what you'd expect, expect with four freshmen and you know a grad transfer and and some injuries. You know we were just up and down. But again, the last ten games, you know we've we've been a lot different team. Uh, but to answer your question, I you know I think our guys are so excited about playing. I you know I told them right away when the pairings came out, numbers don't mean anything. You know. Uh, Cal Irvine didn't think of himself as a 13 after winning 31 games, and uh, you know we don't we didn't think of ourselves as a 12. You know, going against Wisconsin, you know, uh, we didn't we didn't look at ourselves as a big underdog. You know, so uh, you know, the Virginia is is a team that you know is 31 and three. You know, they they've established themselves. Their consistency level is is off the charts. So. We're going to have to play really well. We know that. You know, there's uh, all areas of the game, and especially the boards, where we're going to have to play awfully, awfully well to give ourselves an opportunity. Time for one or two more right here on the left side on the edge. Um, following up on Amin, when you got him, Amin, what, what kind of role do, did you envision for him? And you know, just really what were your expectations um, and, and where you thought he would fit in? Well, he was a starter for us early in the year, and uh, uh, I'm not sure how many games exactly, but he, he started for us to start the season, and uh, and then his role changed as the year went on, and uh, you know then he he got excited about his role and really started doing a great job. But uh, you know when we brought him in, we knew he was a good defender. You know we we knew that uh, I think he led the nation in steals one year that that he was at Corpus Christi and. Uh, you know, he had averaged double figures, so we knew he could score some baskets. Um, but we liked his basketball savvy. You know, we liked how hard he played. And um, so we know we, we knew he could add, you know, something to our ball team. Okay, last question right here, center aisle. Coach, uh, as a 6'9 forward who can also shoot the three, how has Lewis King kind of affected your offense this season? And, and how have you seen him kind of step into a large role as a freshman? Did, did, did he do that very, very early? Did he come in late in the season after Bol Bol got hurt? When did he step in? Well, he got a slow start. Uh, he was recovering from knee surgery, so he didn't play, I'm, I'm not sure, nine or ten games to start the year. And then we had a minute restriction all the way through December. And... Um, 
you know, I don't, I don't think he got fully cleared till maybe the second week in January. Um, so, you know, he was a little bit rusty, you know, coming in after sitting out, you know, eight or nine months. Uh, uh, but he, you know, he picked it up and, and he's playing really good now. He's shooting it better. Uh, his conditioning is a lot better now than it was, you know, in, in January and February. So I think that's helped him a bunch. Um, you know, he's got a good feel for how we're trying to use him offensively. Uh, so he's, he's playing really good, but uh, he did get off to a slow start, you know, obviously missing the first, you know, part of the season and then being on minute restriction for, you know, until mid-January. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to, to really get into a flow until, you know, you're 100% and ready to go. Okay, good deal. Coach, thanks and good luck. All right, luck. thank you.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the Oregon student athletes are on their way to the interview room. How you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good, good, thank you. All right, as the guys get settled here, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions from the floor. Anyone wants to get us started here? Gary? What, how much have you all had a chance to really study Virginia and really figure out you know just exactly how you beat that pack line defense Kenny oh, me. oh um we've been studying them you know ever since we uh beat UC Irvine and we just been focusing on rebounding playing defense and really trying to run them off the line since they have some good three-point shooters and <clears throat> Really, our main focus is just trying to rebound the ball and get them up tempo. Okay. I need you. Yeah. Well, if you don't mind, go ahead. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we enjoyed our win on Sunday, uh, no doubt. But then, uh, you know, this winter going home, we, we started focusing on Virginia on Monday. And, uh, you know, they want to share the ACC and they won 30 games already uh, almost every year now. Uh, have really good shooters, Sky Guy, Jerome, uh, Alexander is a really, really good player. So offensively, they're really dangerous. Uh, then, of course, defensively, everybody knows one of the best defensive teams, if not in the country. So uh, we got our work cut out for us. Uh, we've been watching a little film since Monday, as Kenny said. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really going to come out to who opposes their will more and execute the game plan. Thank you. More questions for the Oregon student athletes. Okay, Gary. Uh, yeah, you have it. I mean, you you've gotten a lot of attention for, what, you know, what you've done here in the tournament, and your coach was saying that you've brought a lot of energy. Um, yeah, how, I guess, how, how do you talk about your mindset in terms of switching roles from you know from being a starter to to coming off the bench and just being able to, to juice up things right away? Uh, I mean, that's, that's I think, what, hap what, uh, what happened for our, what started our winning streak, you know, three, four weeks ago uh, after the uh, UCLA trip at home, you know, everybody just decided to take the role, uh, whatever it is, you know, uh, whether it's shooting the ball, scoring the ball, rebounding, getting loose balls, uh, taking charges, bringing energy, getting deflections, uh, being a leader, being vocal, whatever your role is, just do it good. And, you know, Coach has been telling us lately, uh, just do your job and do a little better, especially this late in the season. So, you know, I've just been thriving and uh, doing my job and bringing it on defense. And uh, uh, I think my teammates have been doing a good job trying to help me and, uh, you know, not, not tell me to stop, but keep going. So uh, I think that's why I've been a little more aggressive lately. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Right side in the back. Uh, Aaron McFarling with the Roanoke Times in Virginia. Uh, Kenny, you, you guys have four starters listed at six foot nine or above, or six foot nine, mm -hmm. including yourself. Yes. Uh, what are the benefits and drawbacks of that? I mean, how have you been able to use that exceptional size to your guys' advantage? Um, you know it. It closes a lot of passing lanes. It makes it really hard for teams to be able to find the open man, and it closes a lot of driving lanes. So they're not able to <clears throat> drive to the uh, basket as easy. And with me being in the inside, 
being able to block shots and affect uh, teams, being able to score, I feel like it really benefits the team as a whole, you know, being able to be that long and that lengthy and still be able to be able to guard like guards and things like that, being able to switch, being able to guard in the post, like have Lou guard our postmen, have Francis go out there and guard a guard. So I feel like it, it really works all in our favor. Dave Kane with the Virginia Sports Radio Network. Um, I'm curious for either of you guys, if you guys have been in a part of a swing this drastic where, you know, a month ago you guys are at UCLA feeling like you're not in the tournament. Now here we are on the verge of an Elite Eight. H have you guys experienced anything like that? And, and how different does this team feel now than it did a month ago? Kenny, then E, please. Gotcha. Um, no, I, I've never been a part of a, a, a drastic swing like this, you know, going from – you know, thinking that we're never going to be in a tournament, that I was never going to be able to play in a stage like this to make it into the Sweet 16, you know, it, it feels surreal. I'm still trying to take it in one day at a time. And ultimately, you know, I'm just trying to continue to play. But to answer your question, no, I've never been a part of a, a such a drastic change like this happened so quick, you know, after losing to UCLA, USC, and still being the only team in the pack that's playing. So, no, I haven't. Yeah, me personally, never, uh, not even close to this. But, yeah. uh, I mean, we was 6-8 and eight in the Pac-12. And, it's, uh, you know, we, we didn't see uh, the end of the tunnel at that point. But, you know, we just stick with it. And we know that once we got our team together and our defense together, we can be really dangerous in March. And coach would always tell us it's never too late. It's not too late. And it's been an up and down season for us all year, you know. Uh, had Bull, got hurt <clears throat> seven, eight games into the year with a season ending injury. Lou didn't even start with us the year. Uh, you know, Paul sprained his ankle, was almost out for two weeks. Kenny broke his jaw. Uh, Peyton was hurt for a little bit, banged up. Uh, so it's been an up and down year for all of us. And we finally started getting together, you know, end of January, early February, and everybody got healthy. And then, uh, you know, we started getting even better in practice and showed in games. And we lost a lot of close games early in the year. Uh, our record didn't show how good we are. And we was young. And I think that's we learned from all these losses early in the year. And they're paying off now. And uh, so, yeah, I think we knew that not this special or something, this special is going to happen. But we knew can, we can be really good. Okay, we're staying over here on my left. Kenny, you mentioned how surreal this whole run has, has felt. Was there a moment at any point in the run where you took a step back and were like, oh, wow, we could actually you know, make some noise here and do something? Um, yeah, it, when I realized that we had the capabilities to be able to compete with the top teams like in the country was after we beat Washington at home for their senior night. I never wanted to win a game so bad in my life. Like, I wanted to beat them bad because, you know, they beat us on our floor earlier in the year. And, you know, it was a lot of things that people were saying about us. You know, we weren't going to be able to win. We were going to lose as soon as we got into the Pac-12 tournament. And we ended up winning the Pac-12 tournament. So all of that just ended up falling in line. And then, you know, that's really when I thought that we were able to do anything if we really just got together and now we're here. Anything else for the Oregon student athletes? All right, we'll let these guys go. Thanks and good luck guys. Thank you. Virginia student athletes at 2.05.
Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, in five minutes, we'll have the Virginia student athletes. Five minute warning.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Cavaliers are on their way to the dais here in the interview room. Just a reminder to check all cell phones and mobile devices. Make sure they're on silent. And as always, no flash photography or video recording in the interview room. And when you do have a question, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you and let us know who you are and what outlet you are with. And as soon as these guys get settled, we'll get underway. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome. Good to see you. All right. I think we're good to go, so we can open it to questions from the floor for the Virginia student athletes. Start here on the right side, second row. Uh, Aaron McFarling with the Roanoke Times. Uh, DeAndre, they have four starters at 6-9. Um, I guess maybe Florida State might be a comp, uh, one of the a team that you've seen. But what are the challenges when you face a team with that kind of size, uh, kind of across the board? Um, I mean, they'll be good defensively, probably. Uh, they probably switch a lot of things. Um, that length would definitely bother us. Um, we're going to have to box out, but uh, I feel like we'll be fine. Hi, Caroline Darney, SB Nation. Um, Kyle, this is a place you guys are familiar playing and coming from Columbia. You've had a, an away game there this season. What kind of benefit does that have? And the three-point shooting hasn't always been kind to you guys here, so how does that play into your preparation this week? Yeah, I mean, there's always an advantage. There's always an advantage to, uh, you know, having played in the gym before. Um, you know, shooting will come and go. That's why we play defense at, at Virginia. So. Um, you know, we still shoot with confidence, and you know, I didn't even shoot a good last last game, and these guys are still feeding me. So as long as we have that confidence in each other, then we'll be fine. Okay, let's go to the left side here, second row. Hey, Kyle, coaches urge you guys to, to really take joy in winning and in the process as a team. Was it is it hard at all to reconcile that with um, maybe after Sunday, maybe you didn't have your greatest personal shooting performance? It's sort of hard to reconcile that. Um, no, I'm all about the team, and um, we have a blast, you know, trying to pursue a, a championship. Um, and you know, these are moments that we're never going to forget, and moments we're trying to cherish. So, and we're going to the my right side here, second row. Yeah, Doug Dowdy from the Run of Times. Ty, how much do you watch other teams, maybe on the West Coast during the season, and what all do you know about Oregon? Oh, they cut the mic off. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've only seen Oregon once in the Pac-12 championship. They beat Washington. I think, yeah, it was Washington pretty good. Um, and I know they're hot. I know they're um, tall across the board. Um, they have a really good point guard and a lot of guys that can make shots. So I know they're playing really good defense as of late, too. So um, like Dre said, it'll be a good challenge for us. But uh, we feel like we have a, a really good attack, and we're excited. Yeah, two right here in the my right side. Ty, this is a team that likes to also play at a slower pace tempo-wise. Does that present an advantage to you guys, or is it something where you kind of thrive in slowing down teams that maybe aren't used to being slowed down? Um. I think that they probably want to play at a similar pace, but for us it's always about trying to get the best shot possible. So if that comes quicker in the shot clock, that's fine, or if that comes late, that's fine too. And then it's always about just trying to make um, them take a tough shot. Um, that's our motto, you know, make them take a tough shot, then get a good shot. So whatever pace that comes at, um, we're fine with. Kyle, I know you said you're all about the team, and you certainly demonstrated that. but. Uh, when you have a, a shooting night like you did the other night, does that make you eager to get it back out there and, and give it another shot? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, uh, you know, when my shots aren't falling, I try to, you know, help the team in other ways, whether it's play a little bit harder on defense or try to, um, you know, create for others. Or even just my presence on the floor sometimes gets guys open because they're not going to help off of me, even if I am shooting off for 10, so that helps the team. Um, yeah, I, I'm eager to get back on the court. I think we all are, and i um, excited for the game.
Mr. DeAndre, could you talk a little bit about your thoughts about this building and some of your feelings about how you've played here over the years? Um, I feel like I played well here, um, but it's a, it's a new year, a uh, new game. Um, so um, I'm just looking forward to playing again and having an opportunity to play with my teammates. More questions for the Virginia student athletes? Okay, we got one left side center aisle. Yeah, Kip Coons for South Boston News and Record and Press Box View. Uh, Jack, yeah. Ty said something last week about being excited because this was his first Sweet 16. You, you know, you've been through this before. You, you've seen this kind of advance. What have you tried to let the guys know now that you're officially making a deep run in the tournament? What advice did you have for them? Um, yeah, I just try to have their backs all the time, uh, especially guys in my position, Mamni and Jay. Uh, they've been playing really well over the past two games, so just giving them any advice I can. And I um, mean, yeah, it's pretty awesome to be back here after three years. Okay, more questions? Hi, Dave, Channel 13, Indianapolis, home of Kyle Guy. I just want to get uh, two hours away from Indianapolis. What's the ticket request been like, and how excited are you to perform in front of everybody? Um, yeah, I always have a lot of ticket requests whenever I'm uh, around home, so i um, looking forward to that. It's, it's nice that, you know, we'll be uh, playing close to home for me, um, so it'll be a, a good turnout for my family and friends. Um, but at the end of the day, we're here to win basketball no matter where we're at, so. Back here on the left. All right, Kyle, to that point, uh, how many of you had requests for this game, and what's the most you've ever had? Because you have a pretty good entourage that tends to follow. Uh, yeah, um, so for this weekend, I just told everyone to buy tickets, and then if I had tickets, then they can, you know, maybe make some money on the, on the side scalping, so. Um, but um, I, this year, I had 85 people here uh, when we played here. Okay, come back to the right here. Ty, it seems as if the team has played better in the second halves and the first halves of late, maybe earlier in the season. Uh, to what do you attribute it? The halftime talks, whatever? Um, I think it's a testament to our coaches doing a great job of making halftime adjustments um, and just everybody staying calm at half and understanding that as long as we're in striking distance, um, we'll be all right and just following the adjustments the coaches uh, make for us and coming out with confidence in the second half, no matter what the score is. Okay, back row. <laughs> Tim Sullivan, Louisville Courier Journal. For any of the players, how does last year's experience influence or inform the way you approach being a number one seed this year, and uh, does it make you feel that it's any more delicate or tenuous than, uh, than, than a lot of people might expect? Ty, you want to go first, please? I think um, the way we approached our first game against Gardner Webb, we had a whole different approach to it. We knew how, um, just how good everybody in the whole tournament was, and Gardner Webb still came out and punched us in the mouth, but we were able to remain calm because we, we knew we were going to be in a dogfight. But at this point in the tournament, Everyone is playing at such a high level that you, you would be crazy to underestimate anyone. So last year's tournament experience, kind of, we kind of forgot about it already. One on the left side in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jack, uh, <laughs> can you uh, talk a little bit about Mamadi and Jay and their improvement? And, and uh, why do you think they've gotten so much better uh, toward the end of the season. Any, anything in particular? You know, those two have both been playing amazing over the past two games. Um, they've been doing a good job on defense, scrambling, and um, cleaning up on the boards as well as blocking shots. And they've just been really switched on. Um, so it's awesome to see guys like that. Even though my position, they're my position, they're playing over me. We're winning games, so I couldn't be more happier.
I'm going to concede up front this is a dumb question, but we've seen, <laughs> we've seen UVA fans take over Raleigh. We've seen them come in force to Charlotte and other places. I think maybe the, the crowd presence at Columbia was maybe a little less than some of us expected. Do you, and I'll ask this to you, Ty. I mean, do you get the sense that maybe <laughs> UVA fans were waiting for the second weekend to really, uh, to really show up in force? I mean, are you guys, based on ticket requests and things like that, are you, are you sensing that, uh, that they may be coming uh, in force like they have in the past to, to some other places? Um, <laughs> based on ticket requests, you know, the only requests I get are my family and close friends. So they're here every round or every game they possibly can be. Um, but I don't know what fans are thinking or why we didn't get a great turnout in Columbia, but I don't know. We were very fortunate to move on, and we got to focus on the game and not, who, not the stands. Okay, anything else? Guys, thanks for your time. Good luck. Hey guys, Coach Bennett is on his way to the dais here in the interview room.
that's, that's, we'll, we'll go that route. All right, as Coach gets settled here in the interview room, we're going to go to the floor to take questions. But we do want to welcome the Cavs to Louisville, and uh, we'll go ahead and get the microphones ready and start with questions from the, from the floor. Go right here, left side, my left. Teresa Walker, the Associated Press. Coach, how much does it mean having gotten through the first weekend and, and now getting to this stage? What is there any benefit, anything that can carry over? Well, uh, you know, I think everybody who's um, gotten to this point is playing at a high level. Everybody's highly motivated. Uh, everybody is playing well to advance to this point. So um, I think us having to overcome a, a shaky start against a very good Garner Webb team and facing that and showing some resiliency, I, I hope that the way we had to play to advance and then against Oklahoma will carry over because you're going to need that again to continue to advance. My right, middle. Uh, Aaron McFarling with the Roanoke Times. Uh, Tony, they have four starters listed at 6'9". Um, are there any similarities to Florida State with them, just with their length and size, and, and just kind of how do you counter uh, that kind of a lineup? Yeah, no, their size is impressive and a terrific point guard. Um, you know, I, when we played Duke, um, when Jones was out, they went, you know, they were big and long like that, and then Florida State, um, that length, um, they, their defensive numbers have been terrific in this. They've, they're hot, obviously. They've won 10 in a row, and their numbers are really good in terms of what they're turning people over, field goal percentage defense, and I think a lot of it has to do with their system defensively, what they're doing, and I think their quickness and length. Um, that's just something that they can close on shooters, uh, plug gaps, and they're interchangeable parts, which makes it challenging. So. Um, you just got to, you obviously got to try to get shots. You got to be good with the ball offensively. You got to take care of it when they pressure you. And then, uh, of course, be as good as you can defensively against them. But I think that's why teams have, you can just see it. There's not many easy looks out there. You have to work for them. I've got one here on my left. Uh, Tony, we heard from some of the players that after the Oklahoma game, you, you came in the locker room and had a stuffed monkey on your back. And mm -hmm. you actually pulled it off. Do, do you feel now that you're here at the second weekend of the tournament, has there been any shift in the energy with the guys? Uh, we just had fun with that. You know, that's, again, only those of us who've been um, part of last year's team and been in, in through this year and all the things were there can appreciate it. And this will, we'll be bonded for life by this experience. But we just had fun with it saying, you know, that that is there. And they had to kind of fight through it. And so in coming to the locker room and saying, all right, that part is gone or you've gotten past that. I think there's, you know, we've talked about all the time, we've talk, there's uh, the joy of competition, the fun in pursuing a championship, but there's still a focus and there's still expectations and, you know, pressures and all that there. But I think that they could get over that obstacle, I think was significant. And they'll have that with them. Now coming into the Oklahoma game, I thought we played early, better, we were more efficient, and we're going to have to do that here. And again, advancing, it's, it's another step, and I think there's excitement. So um, it does feel a bit different than, and I think it, you'd ask any program that, but ours, than your first round games. So to advance is, you know, excitement. Right side in the back. Uh, Tim Sullivan, Louisville Courier Journal. Kind of a follow-up, do you feel unburdened by getting this far? after what happened last year and, and, uh, and, and how do you process going forward uh, the challenges that still remain? Yeah, I think it's like um, to advance, you know, <laughs> certainly to, to win the first round game after last year's situation, you had to look that in the eye and it was, you know, it was ironic, we were a one seed again in that setting and then to be down, you know, 14 points, but the guys to, to have um, responded with the season they had and to, to have the year they had to be co-champs in a league, the ACC that has five teams, obviously we know in the Sweet 16, having to go on the road, play that many games, that to me was an answer that was uh, responding in the right way. And then there was another step of responding um, in, a, in a challenging, tough setting uh, in the first round, second round, and here we are. And I think certainly there's um, an enjoyment and a freedom in it, but there's also a, a, a desire to play well and advance again. Burden, unburden, 
doesn't really matter in my opinion. You just you, you step up to the challenge that's there. Uh, you have joy in it. You have focus in it. And um, you got to be able to look both uh, victory and defeat in the eye and say it's a possibility and, and go forward. I think that's, that's the best way to be. And uh, our guys have worked very hard to get to this spot. And, and obviously, everyone here is, is desperate to advance. Okay. We're going to go over to the left side here. And the, I think you two guys had questions. Hands up. Okay, those two, and then right in front of them after that. Uh, Tony, a lot of times in the past, I know your dad has given you a golden nugget before you go to a tournament. Has he said anything to you this year about uh, how to approach things or any special little messages? Um, he always gives me great insight and messages, and you know he doesn't watch the games every now and then. I don't even know if he's going to be here, if he's going to come to the games. He didn't last week. I, that's always a, a game time decision. But um, he's been a rock for me over my career, as so many have. Um, but he's, he's helped me. And, um, you know, I, I think only as we talked about last time, parents understand and bleed or feel for their, their children in ways that the rest don't. So when he tells me things, I know it's trusted. And the fact that he's been through it uh, as a coach, that he's coached teams to a Final Four, he's had first round defeats, all, all that in between is invaluable. So, but there isn't anything specific that stands out. Um, just, I think he just wants, I think he's thankful and wants us to keep playing well. Yeah, Kip Coons for uh, South Boston News and Record and Press Box View. Tony, uh, talking with Jack and uh, also Jay Huff, they compared Oregon's collection of size and length to uh, Louisville, as far as the teams that you've seen that yeah. are similar. Yes. Uh, matchup zone. Uh, how valid is that, and, and uh, how do you prepare for a team with, with four, six, nines? Yeah, I think, you know, we talked about Florida State, Duke, um, Louisville. I don't know if Louisville is that, that long. It's, it's unique, and I, I think their zone is different, um, or their, you know, you look at it and say, well, I think they might be man to man sometimes. I think their zone, it's, it's just, it's very effective. So all of the experiences help, but I don't think there's a team that plays their kind of defense in our league. Um, so, you know, again, you, you study film and you try to come up with a game plan and, and go after it and know you're going to see, I think the, um, the, I don't know if anybody's quite that long and that athletic or has someone as athletic as their interior player in Wooten. Tony, with Kyle looking to bounce back shooting wise from Sunday, do, do you feel because as a player, you were also a very efficient shooter. Do you feel equipped to sort of help him with, with that sort of thing? I think Kyle played, you know, he missed shots. But what I liked is he played well. He, he got to the lane. He passed well. He guarded hard. That's your, it's about the whole game. And yep, we're going to have to make some shots, of course. Um, and I think he, he's not going to be uh, cautious or anxious to shoot an open shot. I mean, he obviously did that even when he wasn't hitting. He took good shots. So, of course, you get extra shots, you work a little bit on your mechanics, but um, you step to the moment and shoot it, and I think he'll be equipped. I don't, I mean, I'll give him the confidence certainly to take good shots, but I'll give him the instruction is play well defensively, play strong with the ball, help this team lead. That's what good players do. That's how you help your team, so that, that will be my advice. Let's go on the left side here, and then we'll go back to Tim. Teresa Walker with AP. Uh, Coach, you've won four of the last five here in Louisville, uh, rallying for the last two. How much of that can be an advantage now that you're playing here at, at this level at, at this weekend? Yeah, um, we've had some wars here. Um, we've, uh, I can remember the one that we lost, the bank shot by... Um, Mango. Yeah, Mango, yeah. You were there, you remember? So, um, but we've had, certainly had some battles. You know, you're in... Um, uh, uh, I guess a familiar setting. I haven't gone out on the floor. I'm sure it's obviously going to be a different, different floor and all that. But uh, I don't know how that'll affect us. But we've been in the bigger pictures. We've been in tough games where we've been down in possession games where you've had to, you know, not unravel and just stay, stay the course. Find, you know, find a stop, get a score, and just keep plugging so you don't panic or you don't. Um, change too much who you are unless there's little adjustments. I think those experiences, whether it was Louisville this year or in games in the tournament or during the year, that's the stuff you look at. And you certainly try not to get in those spots, but that's tournament play. You had a semi-miraculous victory here last year. Uh, yeah, that, oh, that one. When, when the bracket goes up, does that stick in your mind? Is that 
give you comfort knowing how you've come through in this building? Um, and I really didn't think about that. I mean, yeah, we had some amazing um, a comeback win and things like that, but I, I honestly, I didn't think about that. I didn't even quite honestly know where our, I saw, hey, we're going to Columbia, and I didn't even look past that. That's how it was. So, and then, but to be here and obviously have played in this facility is good. We played South Carolina, um, coincidentally, in, um, so we were in that facility. We played them this year on the road. So to be in a place that you've been, you maybe understand the, the feel a little bit, um, can't be a bad thing. Okay, we have two questions here on the right. Do you, do you ever have a game, one of your games end early, maybe at home, and do you, we turn on the TV and watch one of the Pac-12 games at check? <laughs> well, out? here's what I understand. I'm, when I was at Washington State, and I got the job at Virginia, I think the majority of people are like, who is this? Who's, who's this guy? You know, again, they, they knew the name from, obviously, uh, the singer, but that's about it. You're, you know, half the time, everybody's in bed when the Pac, you know, well, it was Pac-10, when I was at the Pac-12, are playing games. So, um, but I have great respect for Oregon um, and for Coach Altman. Dana's done a terrific job. What he's done with his team to, you know, kind of change some things and then win 10 games. So, and obviously watch him. But I don't watch a ton of other games, any other conference, really, um, unless it's just uh, bits and pieces of it. So I think, you know, I understand, like I said, when you talk about you just, all you got to do is watch them and see what they've done in the last number of games to appreciate and respect their, uh, their caliber of play. Tony, uh, Mike Curtis has talked uh, before about the communication with you and putting together mm -hmm. his program and what he does. I'm curious from your point of view, what does he do this time of year um, to keep the guys fresh, not overwork them. And particularly, I'm interested in when you're playing two games in a weekend, what, you, what he does in the day in between that kind of keeps them fresh but doesn't overdo it. And yeah. um, just what goes into that? Yeah, I think, you know, your strength and conditioning coaches are invaluable, and your athletic trainer, Ethan Sleeva, Mike Curtis, uh, they've been unbelievable all year. Um, getting our guys as healthy as they can, get them to recover after games. Um, and, you know, we just talk a lot about their. The, the load and all that stuff, but you, you have to prepare hard. You have to compete, but then you have to be wise, you know, duration. Um, intensity usually is not something that varies up and down, but, you know, maybe duration and be prepared, but not too much, but don't do too little. I think that's where he gives a good balance. And, um, you know, he's, he's been a godsend for us ever since. He's been with me the whole time, you know, 10 years, and he's cutting edge in everything he does, and he's made incredible um, strides with our players in terms of their not just their bodies but their health and uh, he's he's one of the best time for one more question in, right here in the left side uh, <clears throat> Tony Mamadi and Jay have uh, talked about how their confidence and other non-traditional aspects of their game and discipline have been helped by working with Tom Perrin over the past season what have you observed in those areas that's uh, helped them develop as we go yeah, along? I think there's such an element with um, players um, and the, the mental side of the game and sometimes just processing things with, you know, uh, others outside of it has been good. And Tom's been great with them. And, um, you know, I, I said it early in the year, you know, Mamadi's an X factor for us. And Jay and different guys have. But... Um, when guys aren't playing 35 minutes, 30 minutes a game and their roles are sometimes they're, you know, coming off the bench and it's hit or miss, you have to be strong minded to to be successful in that and be in the moment and learn what, you know, how to process success and failure because, you know, you're 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 in a limited window. And I think um, Tom has helped those guys in that. And, uh, you know, those guys have helped themselves by how they've just stayed after it. They've been about the team and they've worked. And um, that's, uh, that's a pretty consistent formula for players that are good. Right. Coach, thanks for your time today. Good Thank luck. You.